Okay, so uh, this is a session that I actually feel more qualified to chair than the last one I chaired, which is, uh, this is on clinical translation, and uh, we basically, I think the other action item after this, as we've talked about, is this is being taped. It's going to be available to everyone, I believe, this, this entire session, and I'm sure there'll be some follow-ups about how really to, to translate all of the things that we have. But these are some of the projects that have already gone on, and the first speaker will be Samir Parekh. So uh, thanks, William and, and Adam and uh, Ramon for uh, inviting me to talk here. And I'm, I'm very grateful that I have more time so uh, we can actually uh, discuss our, our data. William said one more minute, which <laughs> we'll try to keep it uh, brief. So my group studies uh, multiple myeloma, which is a cancer of terminally differentiated white cells called plasma cells. And this is the second fastest growing cancer in adults. It, it affects about 30,000 people every year, and more than 12,000 die from it in the US every year. Myeloma and Mount Sinai are very well linked because we have one of the largest myeloma programs in the country. Uh, we see about 3,500 patients and take care of them from all over the world and get 600 or 650 result, new referrals every year of complex management patients from other oncologists and hospitals. Uh, this allows us to take care of these patients with new clinical trials and new approaches, uh, one of which I'll describe in my talk. Uh, the challenge in myeloma has been that we've developed a, a number of drugs and approaches over the last 10 or 15 years, but the disease still relapses in the majority of patients and becomes very challenging to treat after two or three lines of therapy. So in order to understand the disease first, we uh, partnered with the MMRF. Uh, interestingly, myeloma had been ignored by the TCGA, the Cancer Genome Atlas, and uh, the patients took it among, upon themselves to develop their version of TCGA and came together, partnered with industry and foundations, and uh, launched this trial of uh, 1,100 patients all over the world coming together being profiled molecularly and followed longitudinally, providing beautiful data for researchers uh, at Sinai and other places to analyze. And the reason we had to do this is because the current clinical staging systems are very crude. They just rely on blood measurements and uh, some uh, routine cytogenetics to stratify patients, and treatments aren't actually based on them. So the approach we took was interesting. We used uh, gene co-expression analysis where groups of related genes that are expressed together make up these modules, and this is like building a Google map of myeloma from scratch. What we did was, after we built these modules, we then overlaid on the modules uh, critical patient data, like what mutations were in which modules, which drugs could be used in which modules, which modules were associated with patient relapse, and ultimately, this is what we got. We got a network which had not just modules, but also clinical traits associated with them, and we published this earlier this year. Um, this particular module, for example, a bad neighborhood in myeloma, if patients had genes overexpressed in this, they were much more likely to relapse and die compared to the others, and when we dug down, we could actually identify a four-gene signature from this that we then validated in over 1,000 patients independently to show that this was prognostic from all over the world. Uh, besides things like this, we also learned about some new drivers of the disease and identified new classes of patients that could be used to actually guide treatment, one of the classes uh, is uh, interestingly overexpressing uh, cancer testes antigens. Uh, one of our investigators is actually studying them as therapeutic targets, and uh, this could be a way of actually developing new drugs by understanding the disease better. 
That's what we did for newly diagnosed patients. Now, as these patients get treated and relapse, we are following them longitudinally and trying to understand their disease, not just at the bulk level, but understanding what clones are associated with drug resistance and relapse. And we've identified patterns of mutations in these patients that are much more likely to predict for relapse already. And this is starting to now bring molecular therapy into the front line.